It's not very common, but some approaches use the so-called back course of a localizer to guide you to the runway. Here, we're lined up with the ILS into runway 35 left at Grand Forks. This is a normal ILS approach with a localizer, as you can see from the approach plate. The opposite runway though, 17 right, has what's called a localizer back course approach. Both approaches use the same nav aid, that is, the localizer situated at the north end of the runway on frequency 109.1. Both approaches have a localizer feather indicating the approach path into the runway. On the north side, on the approach into runway 17 right, the back course the localizer is used, and that's called out by a note on the plate. On the south side, the ILS approach into 35 left, a front course is used. We'll place a note there to distinguish. The localizer feather on the front course has shading on the right side, as viewed from the point of view of an aircraft inbound of the runway. The back course localizer feather has its shading on the left side, again, as viewed from the point of view of an inbound aircraft. This is how we distinguish front course and back course. On this approach, we're inbound on the ILS, along the front course. The needle uses what's called normal sensing. That is, the needle will deflect to the side the approach course is on in relation to our aircraft. As we drift right of course, the needle swings left. To get back on course, we need to fly to the left of the approach course which allows the needle to come back towards center. It works just like a VOR when it's properly set, only it doesn't matter what we have set on the VOR receiver. The localizer signal is directional, so it's always on the same approach course. Now let's turn ourselves around so that we're flying southbound. We're flying away from the runway. You don't usually fly the reverse direction on a localizer. The needle is still off to the left side, but in order to center it, we don't fly to the left again, we have to fly to the right. This is reverse sensing. Many times pilots will visualize themselves as the needle and the approach course as the center circle, so to re-intercept here, we need to fly to the right. To summarize our situation, we're flying outbound, which is the reverse direction, on the front course of the localizer, which is the normal side. A negative and a positive together makes a negative, so we need to use reverse sensing. Now let's get pointed back in the right direction. We're gonna stay just a little bit off to the side of the localizer course. We're still on the front course. Now that we're flying inbound again, we're back on normal sensing. The approach course is to our left and the needle is to our left. As we fly over the runway, the needle gets more sensitive and swings all the way out. The localizer transmitter itself sits at the far north end of the runway. When we reach a beam that point, the signal goes dead and as we continue to fly past it, it comes back alive. We're now on the back course of the localizer. It's the same signal, on the same frequency, and it's broadcasting no differently than on the other side of the transmitter. That's why the needle is still off to the left. That hasn't changed. Also, to intercept, we still need to fly to the left. We're outbound, which is the reverse direction, on the back course, the reverse side of the signal. Just like in multiplication, two negatives cancel each other out and become a positive, so we're on normal sensing. It's abnormal to fly outbound on a localizer, but it's also abnormal to use the back course. So these cancel each other out and we use normal sensing. You see outbound flight along a back course on the infamous Loke DME approach into Aspen, Colorado. From the approach course, if you go missed, you start a climbing right turn to intercept the localizer back course from a remote transmitter. Notice the back course written next to the localizer feather as well as the shading. It's on the left side from the point of view of an inbound aircraft. On this missed approach though, we intercept and fly outbound. Two reverses outbound on the back course make for normal sensing. And this is actually called out on the approach blade. There's nothing special about this particular back course that makes it normal sensing. It's just because we're flying outbound along it. But at Grand Forks, we decide to swing back around and fly inbound to runway 17 right. As always, the needle is deflected to the left, but this time we're flying inbound, the normal direction, along the back course, the reverse side. A positive and a negative make a negative, so we're in reverse sensing. To get the needle centered, we think, I am the needle and chase the center by flying right of course. If you're confronted with a back course or find yourself flying outbound along a front course localizer, remember you'll be reverse sensing. The exception is when you go outbound on a back course where the two reverses cancel each other out and you're just flying normal sensing. It's confusing, so just keep your situational awareness of which side of the signal you're on and you'll have a reality check on yourself. 
Check out IFR Ground Training and more at the link here and in the description.